Hey guys, welcome to another video. We are continuing to working with the LGA775 platform. We've done quite a few videos recently and a lot of the comments were about the memory type. I'm using a gigabyte motherboard with DDR3 memory, 16 gigabytes uh, to be precise. And I got a lot of comments saying that the performance is uh, improved because of DDR3 memory and if you use a motherboard with DDR2 memory that you're not gonna get quite the same result. So this is what this video is about, comparing DDR2 with DDR3. And yeah, it turned out to be a lot of work uh, all up. I used three motherboards and three processors and I had some technical issues. So I've been working on this for quite a long time and it's time to just put a video together and get it out the door it might not be as uh, polished like other videos in the past but hopefully there's enough uh, substance and enough conclusions in this video to help you guys out to help out with this project i asked keybest if they could send us some ram so they sent us a 8 gigabyte ddr3 kit and yeah, I actually like these RAM sticks quite a lot. They come with some nice cooling in a type of retail package as well. And they worked great for me. You're looking at around uh, $27 for a four gigabyte module. So quite affordable to get a eight gigabyte kit. So to begin, let's have a look at the motherboards I'm using. This is the DDR2 motherboard. It's a gigabyte P35 DS3L, so it's got a P35 chipset, supports up to 8 megabytes of memory. I'm using four sticks of 2 gigabytes each. This is a Corsair memory, 800 megahertz, and the timings are written on here 55518, and the bias detected that fine. Now, uh, you can find um, motherboards like this supporting DDR2 memory readily uh, on AliExpress. These are used motherboards. There are differences with the chipset. The P35 chipset goes up to eight gigabytes, but if you go for a P43 or P45 chipset motherboard, you can go up to 16 gigabytes. However, you might find it difficult finding four gigabyte DDR2 module. So at that point, you have to ask yourself, is it worth investing this pla uh, in this platform or should you switch over to a DDR3 uh, platform because uh, there you have access to 16 gigabytes of RAM on most motherboards. I also bought this motherboard. This is an Asus P5G41C-MLX. So this has a G41 chipset, uh, means it's got graphics, there's a VGA output, but what is really interesting about this motherboard is it supports DDR2 as well as DDR3. So you can see um, the two different memory slots here. Now, not at the same time. So it's either DDR2 or DDR3. And there's also a um, RAM limitation here up to eight gigabytes. So you cannot go to 16 gigabytes on this motherboard. And this is the motherboard I've been using for all the Core 2 Quad videos. This is a GA from Gigabyte as well, a P43 TES3G. So it's got the P43 chipset, supports up to 16 gigabytes. So you need to install four sticks of four gigabyte DDR3 memory. And yeah, it does make a difference. Not a massive amount, but 16 gigabytes of RAM is definitely nice to have. And it will smoothen out some of the bottlenecks that might be elsewhere in the system. In terms of price, you can get this for $35 off AliExpress, and that's where I got it from. It came with an I.O. shield, a SATA cable, but no retail packing whatsoever. And here are the three processors that we're gonna check out. So we're starting off with the Celeron E3500. That one has an 800 megahertz frontside bus. Next up comes the classic Q6600. That one has a 1066 frontside bus. And finally, the Q9650, uh, basically marking the top end, which has a front side bus of 1333. So first up, I took the E3500 and I installed it in the Asus motherboard, which has support for DDR2 as well as DDR3. And here we have the results. So we can see that the DDR2 actually outperforms the DDR3. We can see the memory timings. 
on the DDR2 we've got 55515 and with DDR3 we've got 66614. Now do note that everything shown in this video is uh, unoptimized and biased defaults. So you can definitely go in there and tweak some of the timings, but this is not what this video is about. So the memory timings are basically um, set by the SPD on the memory sticks. So the, this benchmark result is from CPU set. I've got Half-Life 2 as well, a lost coast. And here can, we can also see that the DDR2 system outperforms the uh, DDR3. And I've got some other results. I don't have any fancy graphs. Uh, I just I got some notes in my notebook from uh, half a year ago or so because I worked with the Pentium 4 and I also saw that the DDR2 platform uh, with the Pentium 4 outperformed the DDR3 platform with the Pentium 4 and I find that a bit interesting and it all boils down to the memory timings so at 800 megahertz the faster memory timings uh, are the important factor so what does that mean if you're building a retro gaming PC let's say a Pentium 4 um, and with Windows XP I would go with the DDR2 platform. You will get faster results. And also the memory limitations, eight gigabyte is not an issue with Windows XP. Plus uh, you get the boards for a little bit cheaper as well as the processors. And next up was the Q6600. So that one has a higher front side bus as well as two more cores. In CPU set, it was basically a tie between DDR2 and DDR3. We can see that the DDR3 timings are now a little bit uh, looser. 7719, that's because it now runs at 1066 megahertz. Moving on to Half-Life 2, Lost Coast, basically it's a tie as well. So um, I had a few other tests but nothing in the charts just stuff i took notes on and basically in my opinion if you're using a q6600 or any other core 2 or core, core 2 quad with a front side bus of 1066 it really shouldn't matter if you're going with ddr2 or ddr3 you still have the benefits um, of ddr3 in general um, which is motherboard supporting 16 gigabytes, but also um, lower power consumption, DDR3 run on a lower voltage, and prices, of course, it's a lot easier finding a 4 gigabyte DDR3 uh, stick compared to DDR2, at least in, in, in uh, Australia, when I looked on eBay, I found it a lot easier to find some cheap uh, 4 gigabyte DDR3, 1333 or something like that. And next up was the Q9650. Unfortunately, this is when the Asus motherboard decided to die on me. It's not working anymore. Um, I put in a PCI diagnostic card. Uh, nothing on there. The fans go 100%. The processor is cold to the touch, so there's something wrong with the power delivery. Look, the motherboard was only uh, $25, $30, so it's not a big loss. But uh, it was a shame because I couldn't continue with benchmarking with this motherboard. So I had to switch to the other two motherboards. So what I did now was basically I used the Q9650. Both machines have eight gigabytes of memory and I ran a few benchmarks, but also played a few games to get a bit of a subjective opinion. So let's have a look. We've got some 3D mark results first and we can see in most of the benchmarks the DDR3 platform. Now, do note that we are using different chipsets. Uh, so there's just nothing, yeah, there's basically not much I can do about that. Um, but yeah, in most benchmarks, the DDR3 platform was a little bit in front. However, in Skydiver, uh, we got a bit of a, a weird result with the DDR2 platform actually being ahead. We can see the memory timings. DDR3 is now running at 999.24. The next benchmark I looked at was Tomb Raider. Why not Rise of the Tomb Raider? Well, the game uh, crashed on the P35 platform. Not quite sure. I did update the AMD Radeon driver. Maybe it had something to do with that. I'm, I'm not sure. So I just went with Tomb Raider. And yes, we can see a difference here. So the P43 chipset with DDR3 is now clearly outperforming the DDR platform. And we've got another benchmark, Crisis. And we can see once again, DDR3 is a little bit in front, but not much, only one or two FPS. 
And the other observation, just generally uh, using the two machines, I found the DDR3 platform to be more responsive and a little bit snappier, not by a huge margin, but definitely noticeable. And also in the benchmarks, we could clearly see that the DDR3 system was uh, ahead. Again, not by a huge margin, but it definitely was noticeable. So looking at all of this, it does seem to depend on the front side bus of the processor that you want to use. So if you're going with a 800 megahertz front side bus processor, stick with a DDR2 platform, it will be faster. Now if you're going with a Q6600 or a similar processor that has a 1066 front side bus, it shouldn't really matter. And you can get 1066 megahertz DDR2 memory as well. It's just that yeah, that might be a little bit harder to find and also more expensive. However, if you wanna play around with uh, like a fast Q9650 or you wanna do a Xeon mod and check out some of the faster Core 2 Quad Xeon processors, then I do believe it's worth going for a DDR3 motherboard. Now, at that point, of course, you have to do the math and see what's better, best value for you. Um, it might just be better uh, abandoning the 775 platform altogether and going with a Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge system. But what we're doing here on the channel is not necessarily um, meant to be your main daily driver. It's about having fun, um, playing around with old parts that back in the day used to cost a fortune and are now available at a low price. So $35 for a Socket 775 motherboard with DDR3 is not too bad. I did have a look uh, if I could find any other models and yeah, I must admit there is not much choice to be honest. There are some high-end Asus motherboards, but they cost uh, a lot more, so that's absolutely not worth it. Um, but yeah, this motherboard is pretty w decent. Um, it, it's, it's been um, working fine for me with all my uh, projects so far and uh, yeah, I will definitely continue using it and sticking with DDR3 memory for future Xeon quad-core processor videos. And one more thing worth mentioning is the cooling for the chipset or the temperature. Once you install uh, four memory modules, these chipsets, uh, they get really, really hot. Now, on the Gigabyte boards, there's a little fan header here and there, so I highly recommend that you get a little fan and mount it on top. Um, that's what I did. I just used an 80 millimeter fan and, and yeah, just get all placed it around here to cool the, uh, the chipset. Uh, especially once you overclock uh, to around um, 1600 megahertz on the front side bus, then you might have to raise the chipset voltage. I had to do that to get some extra stability and then uh, good cooling is definitely important. So yeah, guys. Uh, like I said, this was a, a lot of work and I really wanted to put together a more polished video, but the way uh, YouTube is, uh, at some point you just gotta uh, release the video and move on to the next project and I'm ready to move on to be honest. But yeah, so my conclusion is for retro gaming, Windows XP with a Core 2 or something like that, stick with DDR2, plenty of performance, actually outperforming DDR3 because of the faster memory timings and you get cheaper motherboards as well as access to really cheap DDR2 memory. If you're using a Q6600 or something like that and you've thought about is it worth upgrading to DDR3, I would say it's not. But if you're also looking at upgrading the processor to something like a Q9650 or a Xeon uh, with a higher, with a three gigahertz or more clock speed, then you should definitely look at getting a DDR3 system. And that's it. Do let me know what you think down below in the comments about memory choices with the LGA775 platform and what motherboard do you recommend. And yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.